Hi, and welcome to Cryptocurrency Blockchain News, your daily cryptocurrency blockchain aggregated news show on YouTube. Look, look, it's going to be drinking. Look, look, it's going to be smoking. Look, look, it's going to be swearing. Look, look, you've been warned. So look, look, here I come. In three, two, one. Bye, welcome everybody. Black, white, gay, straight, Christian, Muslim, Jew, welcome. My name is Shamar Clark. Welcome to Cryptocurrency Blockchain News. The greatest show on earth. The greatest show. In the bowl, dear. Bye, and greatest show in the daggone multiverse. We have a great show for you. Bye, today. Yes. Great show for you today, folks. Look, look. All right. Let's get to it. So, look, look. Grayscale adds Cardano to large cap fund. Going to read about that. Uh, okay, and so we talked about India yesterday. So, we talked. All right, we'll, we'll talk about when we get there, when we get there. So. India investment surges. India crypto investment surges 600%. Bah, we're going to talk about that. And then Elizabeth Warren, a senator here in America, she gave the SEC till the July 28th a deadline for crypto regs. So we're going to read about that. Then we're going to do the shout outs and the daily summary as per usual. So, bye. Let's begin. We begin with a bye. Yeah. Let's head over all over here. Bang, let's check out the numbers. Let's do a little bit of refresh. A little bit of refresh. All right, guys, hope everyone's having a great day. Look, price of Bitcoin, $33,736. And when I left you yesterday, we were at $32,472. So we have gone up. One thousand two hundred and sixty four dollars up one thousand two hundred sixty four dollars. Great. All right. Look, look, let's look at the top 10 of the day. Hold on. Let me get my dag on. Let me get my dag on. All right. Let's get to the top 10 of the day. Usual suspects. Top 10 Bitcoin, Ethereum. Tether. Binance Coin, Cardano, XRP, Dogecoin, USD Coin, Polkadot, and Uniswap. Let's look at the market moves of the day. Sickle did up, sickle did down. Sickle did up, sickle did down. Sickle did, whoops, sickle did up, sickle did down. Sick of this up, sick of down. Oh, look at EOS, 14% up. Terra, 17% up. Sick of this up, sick of this down. Sick of this up, sick of this down, too. Single digits up, too. Single digits down. All right, let's see who lost money today. You see anything here? You're like, go get it because it's on sale. But, see, we got. Ush. Slim pickings, slim pickings. <laughs> All right, top 10 losers. Top 10 losers, Elrond, Harmony. Uh, who are we talking? Ox, Phantom, Shibu Inu, Iota, OKB, and Revane. Let's see who made money today. All right, there's some decent gains right here. Decent gains indeed. Look, look, top 10 gainers. Axie Infinity, Flow, Stacks, Engine Coin, Terra, EOS, Decentraland, Compound, Chilies, Chilies, and Bang Cosmos. All right. Oh, yeah, speaking of Chilies, yeah, Chilies has some sort of exchange. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Today, Sloppy was showing it to me. And, uh, well, here in America, you're not allowed to see it, but he showed, he gave me like a little screenshot of, of, uh, some sort of, uh, Aston Martin token. Um, you know how the Aston Martin Formula One team. So he showed me the token on the exchange. Yeah. Yeah. So Chili's has an exchange. It's pretty interesting. All right. Uh, where are we at? So single this up. Uh, we did that, did that, did that. All right. So total mark cap is. Oh. What? Wait. 
All right. All right, so Mark Cap is $1.397 trillion. When I left yesterday, we're at $1.349 trillion. So we've gone up 0. 0.0. Uh, 0.048 trillion dollars. Let's see what the 24 hour volume is. My gosh. All right, 24 hour volume is 70.4 billion dollars. While I left yesterday, we're at 77.7 billion dollars. So we've gone down 7.3 billion dollars. Fuck, man. We're really just not getting above that 100 billion again lately all right we'll get there again anyway plus coin market cap they always recalibrate the how they calculate total volume so i think they probably did a recalculation all right anyways man let's move on but in grayscale ads cardano to digital large cap fund after rebalancing so uh we read yesterday cardano partnered with that lending platform nexo and today they're added to the grayscale digital large cap fund. Bang! So, uh, you know, grayscale, you know, a lot of people are buying this grayscale, are buying grayscale. Um, I don't really read them to you guys. I don't read them, but yeah, a bunch of companies and a bunch of um, asset managers, right? Um, are buying the. Um, or buying grayscale funds or buying grayscale funds yeah yeah so it shows you the hunger it shows you people want to be in like i showed you people want to be in it crypto but you know they don't want to own the crypto and have to custody it themselves and all that so you just buy a fund and there you go nice and easy right No custody, no crap. All right, let's check it out. In a recent development, Grayscale Investments announced an adjustment to its Grayscale Digital Large Cap Fund, GDLC, to include Cardano's ADA as the third largest hodling. Reflecting the growing demand for crypto assets, sorry, sorry, crypto investments, crypto asset investments, there we go, the fund's portfolio was adjusted by selling existing components for fiat currency and reinvesting it in Charles Hoskinson's ADA token. As of July 1st, 2021, each share of the GDLC basket is comprised of 67.47% Bitcoin, 25.39% Ethereum, 4% ADA, and the remaining 2.88 is a mix of Bitcoin Cash, Litecoin, and Chainlink. Back on April 6, 2021, Grayscale pulled off a similar strategy of selling off existing components to include Link, which currently comprises 0.86 of the portfolio. Okay, not even 1%. <laughs> In the Bitcoin dominance, sorry, dominated GDLC basket, ADA currently stands as the third Ethereum-based token after Ethereum and Link, signaling a rising interest in the Ethereum ecosystem. Soon after the announcement, the market value of ADA shot up and has been on the climb to $1.45 from $1.33. Anyway, we don't read prices around here. Uh, Cardano's ADA price hike can also be attributed to a launch of its first Alonzo smart contract testnet on May 27. In this effort, nearly $31 billion worth of ADA has been staked across 2,665 pools to allow passive income for investors. Yeah, yeah. Apparently, Cardano, I think, is the number one staking, staked coin in all of crypto land. I think it's what I read today. It's either number one or number two, something like that. So, anyways, there you go, Cardano hodlers. Now part of Grayscale's fund. Bang! Good stuff. Let's move on. Bang! Despite regulatory uncertainty, India in crypto investment surges 600% in one year. So, I'm not going to go through the whole thing again. We read it. I talked to you deeply about what's going on in India yesterday. And so we read yesterday about the um, finance minister. She said um, that she'd handed the bill. She'd handed a crypto bill uh, up to the cabinet for consideration. And what was good about that was that she'd made the distinction between cryptocurrencies, things that want to be money, and just other 
digital assets out here that are used for actual use of stuff. Uh, you know, um, so so while there's been a um a gray area, not a gray area, I guess what do you call this? Uh, well, no regulatory clarity in India. One day they're banned, the next day it's good to go. Um, there still has been a surge of six hundred percent this year alone. All right. And again, if you're new here, you never watched this show before or anything like that. Why do we care about India? One in five people on earth are Indian. In China? Well, one in five people on earth are Chinese too. <laughs> so between them, it's 40% of earth. So you're going to keep a good old, good hard hard look on them. You know what I mean? Hard, hard eyeballs on it. See what they're doing. It's quite the population. Quite the population. All right. So despite India's uncertain uh, regulatory climate regarding crypto assets, Nationwide investment in digital assets have increased by roughly 600% over the past year. According to data from blockchain analytics firm Chainalysis, that was reported by Bloomberg on June 28th, crypto investments increased during the mid-2020 before going parabolic as the market surged into new all-time highs towards the end of the fourth quarter. Uh, that's probably due to last year, um, holy, a couple banks um, started offering crypto uh in their bank in your bank account uh one bank was even even has like a classroom to teach people about crypto <laughs> yeah, yeah we watched it here i mean we read about it here and they holy what's wrong with my eyelashes or something it's, and uh and uh, yeah they like literally have classrooms to teach people about crypto at, in the bank in the bank <laughs> that's pretty wild all right so um Chain analysis has to, so hence I can, that's why you could see the big surge uh, since last year. Chain analysis estimates the total investment in crypto across India grew from roughly 900 million to 6.6 .6 billion. Wow. Now that is a nice hefty gain over roughly the past year with the firm estimating 15 million Indians are exposed to cryptocurrency. Yeah, well, 15 million. There are 1.4 billion Indians in the world. So we got to get this number up. <laughs> Let's get this number up. Look, look. And the truth about India, though, so I, I should be honest to you guys about, about something, though. A lot of people in India live under the poverty level, so they won't be engaging in any crypto-ness, okay? So let's be realistic. I mean, they do have 1.4 billion people, but <laughs> out of that, out of that, only about uh, yeah. there's only about you know say 800 million that you'd be considered middle class so but which is huge because that would mean you know America is only 330 million people yeah half of these people live in poverty most of them are in debt actually up to their eyeballs on, with credit and uh, debt and so uh that's the beauty. 800 million of them over there. Yeah, well, they got money to spend. So, look, look, that's why we're watching. So, the data, and the same goes for China. Um, a lot of their people live in poverty, right? Uh, still, in the rural areas, uh, you know, so, you know, they have 1.2 billion people in China, but yes, all of them, it's not like all of them have money to spend on crypto, just like in your country, right? Uh, you got your, your rich, your middle class, and then the poor people, you know, so. Uh, crypto is, and investing in general, is usually a middle class to rich person thing. Poor people, obviously, they ain't got time for investing. They got to buy fucking, put bread on the table for the kids. Look, so the data illustrates the positive impact of the Indian Supreme Court's March 2020. All right, all right, let's slow down, let's slow down. <laughs> okay, the data illustrates... The positive impact of the Indian Supreme Court's March 2020 decision to overturn the Reserve Bank of India's ban on financial institutions providing banking services to firms operating with digital assets. So remember I explained to you yesterday, the fucking Central Bank of India told all the banksters, or the Reserve Bank of India, Central Bank, whatever you want to call it, uh, told the banksters, yeah, you're not allowed to do crypto stuff. And the banksters and the crypto people were like, who the fuck are you to say that? Right? You're just the fucking Central Bank. 
Your job is just to print money, burn money, raise interest rates, or lower them. It's not to tell us banksters what to do. Right? Like here in America, the Fed Reserve Chairman Powell, he can't tell our banksters what to do. That's controlled by the what's called the Office of the Comptroller of the Currency, the OCC. Right? <laughs> like if the Fed Chairman ever told Jamie Dimon or any of those banksters, like, hey, you're not allowed to do this, they'd tell him to go fuck himself. Go fuck you, buddy. Who the fuck you think you are talking to? That's not your job. Your job is to print money, burn money, raise interest rates, or lower interest rates. That's your job. Not to tell me what to do with my bank. And so that's what they, in India, that's what they told. So they took the, they took these, the, the reserve, they took the central bank to court and told the judge, Your Honor, fucking central bank, they're not allowed to tell us this, what to do uh, with our bank. <laughs> and the judge was like, yeah, you're right. And so they won. And, uh, but there's still no law there. That's the problem, right? And so that's what I read you yesterday is that that law is going up to the cabinet and we'll see about it. Anyways, so however, it has not been entirely smooth sailing for India's crypto sector since the Supreme Court replaced the RBI ban last March with lawmakers frequently threatening new legislation prohibiting crypto assets over the past 15 months. And that's what's been happening. Once the Supreme Court um, reversed, well, it's not about reversing what the central bank did wasn't legal. So once they said that, well, then a bunch of lawmakers in their Congress over there started saying, oh, yeah, well, we're going to make laws to ban this. So, so, you know, people are afraid. You know, you don't want to open a big, a big crypto exchange, a big crypto something. And then a couple months down the road or a year or whatever, uh, these guys come out and ban it. Wow, fuck, you just started a whole business for nothing, didn't you? Time to start new. So in spite of the persistent threats of a renewed regulatory crackdown, Sandeep Gonka, the co-founder of local exchange ZebPay, highlighted growing appetites for digital assets among Indians aged 18 to 35, noting preference to invest in crypto over gold. And you know about Indians. They buy a lot of gold. Indians buy a lot of gold. <laughs> like when I was a kid, they used to catch Indians coming into America. Uh, sorry, sorry. Into Canada uh, at the airport with literally suitcases full of it. Right. They'd try to bring it on as luggage. Hey, you got to pay because you have to pay duties, right? When you bring money in, you have to pay duty on that. Yeah, they'd try to bring it in big suitcases just full of bricks of gold. Indians love gold, baby. Well, all Asians do, all Asians, uh, Asian countries. Uh, you know, people actually buy gold, like, you know, Canada, America, Europe. You don't really just go buy gold, right? You know, you don't, I mean, unless you're going to wear it, you know. Your girl, you buy a gold necklace for your girl or something, but you don't just buy bricks of the shit. Yeah, well, go to any Chinatown in America or Canada. What do they always have? They always have a gold shop, right? Yeah, Chinese and Indians, they buy bricks of gold. You know, they don't trust banks. It's not they don't trust them, but just uh, it's just their culture. They just buy it, right? In India, you give gold away, little these little coins of gold uh, to the bride and the groom, right? It's just standard. Anyways, and so what I'm saying is that's why this is important in that 18 to 35-year-olds are now buying crypto instead of gold, right? You know what I'm saying? So they're... Their culture is to buy gold. That's their, how they are. You know, that's their culture. But the young people are, hey man, fuck this gold. Let me buy some crypto. So, all right. That's the importance of that. Anyways, they find it far easier to invest in crypto than gold because the process is very simple. You go online, you can buy crypto. You don't have to verify it, unlike gold. So, 32-year-old local entrepreneur, Ricky Sood, is among those who have pivoted away from gold in favor of cryptocurrency. Sud has invested more than $13,000 in digital assets since December, having cashed out a portion of her portion of her position when Bitcoin broke above 50,000 in February before reinvesting amid the recent crash. I'd rather put my money in crypto than gold. Crypto is more transparent than gold or property and returns and returns are more in a short period of time. Yeah. The ROR is sweet. Rate of return is nice. 
You buy a brick of gold, well, or a little coin of gold, or however, however much you buy. Well, you know, gold. You know, it doesn't just fly like that, like crypto, like Bitcoin, right? <laughs> Whereas Bitcoin flies, and so your return on investment is quick. And so, bang, that's good. Uh, this is a good little story right here. Just to show you that even though we have the uncertainty happening, which I described yesterday uh, a lot, well, I guess I'm just a little bit right now, um, the people are still pushing forward. And um, and uh, so, like we read yesterday, um, the finance minister gave a crypto bill to the cabinet, and you could see it was a good bill. They distinguished between wannabe money and actual companies that are just doing stuff with blockchain, tokenized blockchains. And so, uh, yeah, uh, we'll see how this works out. All right. Bang. And finally, Elizabeth Warren gives the SEC until July 28th deadline to figure out crypto regulation. So, uh, well, let's, <laughs> let's read the byline. The Democrat senator said in a letter to SEC Chair Gary Big Brains Gensler that she needs answers by July 28th. So, uh, a few people have been complaining about this. I mean, I don't know what the fuck you're complaining about. We need regulatory clarity. And so it's good that now the Congress is pushing them for regulatory clarity. Uh, last year, when we had the last SEC guy, uh, cock blocker Jay Clayton, um, uh, the senators, a couple senators told him, well, hurry up and regulate, and he didn't do anything. Like I said, he was just a lawyer. He was a moron. He didn't know. He didn't even know what he was doing. Um, but, uh, well, Gensler does know what he's up to, and so uh, she she demands answers <laughs> by July 28th. And so uh, let's read this. Let's check it out. So look, crypto skeptic, U.S. Senator Elizabeth Warren, Gave the security. She's not a skeptic. They just want uh, protections for consumers. Crypto skeptics. U. A U.S. Senator gave the Securities and Exchange Commission until the end of this month to figure out its role in regulating cryptocurrencies. The senator who chairs the Senate Banking Committee's subcommittee on economic policy said in a letter to SEC Gary Gensler that she needs answers by July 28th. Despite the rising popularity of crypto, a lack of common sense regulations have left ordinary investors at the mercy of manipulators and fraudsters. Bang! So that's what she's about. She's about just the manipulating and fraudsters. She's not. No one wants to stop crypto. Like, that's one thing. No one wants to stop it, but everyone wants and needs some fucking regulatory clarity. So the SEC must use its full authority to address these risks, and Congress must also step up to close these regulatory gaps, she added. Yes, you must do that, or else we're never going to get our hedge funds. I've said it here a million times. It's not that these hedge fund guys don't want the crypto, or the banksters, or all of them, all those big money guys. They can't get it because there is no regulatory clarity. All right? They're not allowed to put their clients' money well, into unregulated shit. They're just not allowed to do that. So the SEC must use its full authority to address risk, blah, 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 regulatory gaps. So Warren has long been critical of Bitcoin, describing the crypto as speculative in nature and going to end badly. Well, it is speculative. It's not going to end badly. It'll be just fine. So she also voiced her concerns about the lack of regulatory clarity involving crypto and the energy uses of proof-of-work cryptocurrencies during a June subcommittee hearing. Yes, 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 yes. It's not good for the environment. It's true, true, true. All right, so, but this is great because, uh, well... Uh, this is forcing Gensler to um, to come up with some fucking regulations to make a decision. What are these things, right? Um, uh, yeah, I mean, that's what we're waiting for. That's what we've been talking about on this channel since the beginning. Um, you need regulatory clarity. And once you have that, well, then everything can spring forth in a bigger, better way, right? Like, you see, once the OCC... The Office of the Comptroller of the Currency, once the OCC last year gave regulatory clarity to the banks, hey, you can all custody crypto, bang! Well, now all these banks are starting to custody crypto, starting to getting ready to offer Bitcoin and stuff, right? Because once you have clarity, then it just springs, you know, these, these guys are sitting here, they want in. 
You know, they want in bad. You know, but without the regulations and the clarity, they're not allowed to come. So they're just sitting there. But as soon as you give it, boom. Like, look at all the bank stuff I've been reading about, right? Since last June. Um, and so from, from from that's from our perspective, that's what we want, right? Regulatory clarity. So all these big boys start piling in. And... Uh, It'll come. I mean, it's, it's going to, it can't stop it. You know what I mean? You can't stop crypto. It's going to be here. It's going to be a thing forever and ever. Um, but just, it won't be a big, big thing until there's regulatory clarity. Not just here in America, but around the world. All right, so let's move on. Bye, what we got here? Grinchable, Grinchable. Love it, see brother. Bye. What's he saying? Singularity Net is using Cardano because of its decentralization. Yep. Bang. Look at Kong. He's got the favorite. Look, look, Kong. <laughs> wow. Love by the Zebra the Bang. Look, look, player. <laughs> yeah, you know how Kong do. He loves him some goodie room. Bang. <laughs> Bang. <laughs> Bang. Grayscale adds Cardano to large cap fund. Bang. India crypto investment surges 600%. Bang. And Elizabeth Warren demands answers by July 28th from the SEC about crypto. Bang. Look, bang. Look, bang. Look, look. Yes. All right, Kong. Let me see the bang. Good. All right. Here's everybody here. Boom. What we got here? Robbie Hardaway. Whoops. Being here so long, his picture's in black and white. Let me see the ha <laughs> ha. Bang. And drop a son of a bitch. <laughs> bang. <laughs> bang. <laughs> bang. Got you wrong. Hey. Son of a bitch. Love you, brother. See you, brother. No one save you. Bang. Andrew Trader, the enforcer. Look, everybody listen up. The juice is worth the squeeze. Hodl. The juice is worth the squeeze. Love you, brother. See you, brother. Bang. Bam. Connecting the dots. Love you, brother. See you, brother. Bang. Cardano Welfare Stake Pool. Mission-driven Australia-based Cardano staking pool to contribute to below charity Save the Children Care Australia Planet. All right. Love it. See you with the bang. Sunny B. Spy lady. Love you, lady. See you, lady. Bang. Universal misanthrope holding down the insurgency in Central Europe. Love it. See you with the bang. Chapey Visa for the Pasqua Yaki Trot. V Chain Master, V Chain Hold Us, V Chain Kill Us. Tool Master. Larry Chief, C Chief. Bang. Deep Entertainment. So, brother. Yeah. Look, look. Larry with the Z for the Bang. Pollywood. DJ Pollywood. Larry with the Z for the Bang. <laughs> Pollywood. This guy's getting into all this NFT weird shit. KJ Gatsby, Larry with Zebra, the bang. And Radster holding down the Eastern insurgency in Eastern Europe. Larry with Zebra, the bang. All right, that's everybody. Let's get to the Death Star. Bang. Here we are. Whoops, whoops. No, no, no. Bang. Here we are. All right, here we are now. All right. So look, look. Quick show today. Holy. Is this even half an hour? I don't even think so. There's not much to. Not much to yap about. It is what it is, right? So, Grayscale adds Cardano to large cap funds. So, um, wow, just amazing for Cardano. Um, um, I told you about that thing, you know. Um, people are a little angry at Hoskinson right now. Like, what the fuck, dog? What the fuck? Where's all the stuff you promised? And then I guess today he kind of said he pushed back and said, "Look, uh, things are working out. Settle down or something." <laughs> Pretty much is what he said, paraphrasing obviously. And so they're part of the fund, and so that's great. Uh, great for Cardano. Bang! And then India crypto investment surged six hundred percent, and so yeah, with all the fiasco going on in India, all the bull crap. Uh, Supreme Court cases, this, 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 that. 
um, uh, you know, politicians threatening, <laughs> we're going to ban this shit, you know, threatening Bitcoin uh, or threatening crypto in general. And like I said, you got to remember about India. India is not concerned with uh, distributed ledger technology services providers like VeChain or Chainlink or anything like that. They just don't like that cryptocurrency, this wannabe money stuff, right? And so that's what's really getting them. And what was good was that we read yesterday, the finance minister, she made the distinction, right? The, she made the distinction. She saw, she, she mentioned the differences, you know? These guys over here, these stable coins of Monero and X, uh, you know, Zcash and all this shit, yeah, there's some wannabe money crap, right? Whereas all the rest of these are actual companies whose tokenized blockchain provides services and efficiencies for your company, your organizations, or your governments, right? It, you know, it's it services society, right? They service society. They're not some wannabe money thing. They actually do something to benefit society. And so um, I'm glad she made that distinction there. Um, and uh, and so, and but even though there's a, you know, just... Um, I guess we need regulatory clarity, but in India, it's super regulatory uncertainty because they had already, you know, the, ce the the central bank had already banned it once. Well, tried to ban it. It wasn't their job to ban it, so you're not allowed to do that, you idiot. But, you know, since there was already a big attack on crypto there, it's, it's very, by the government, it's very, uh, you know, up in the air. Is this thing going to be allowed in? Are these things, not this thing, are, well, let me put it this way. Is this market, there we go, there we go, let's, let's look at it that way. Is this market, is this asset class going to be allowed in India? And, um, and uh, well, even though there's no regulatory clarity on it yet, <laughs> well, it surged 600%. And you saw the chart there, uh, once, the, once, the, once the Supreme Court told the uh, central bank, Listen, fuck stick. You're not allowed to ban crypto. That's not your job. <laughs> Fucking idiot. What are you talking about? Print money, burn money, raise interest rates, lower interest rates. That's your job. You don't tell banksters what to do. So once they got schooled by the Supreme Court, <laughs> well, you saw from the chart, look, look, the crypto has been rising in India. And so, well, use or buying it and all that investing in it has been rising. And apparently it's been, it's it has surged 600%. Since the announcement, since the uh, that court ruling, and so, um, well, let me just say this: you can just imagine, right? The for the finance minister gave that bill to uh, to the to the to the cabinet yesterday. Well, if the cabinet approves that bill, well, look, look, look to the moon. <laughs> That's what's going to be going down in India. And so uh, let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. Uh, which is all we can do. You know, just wait and hurry up and wait and we'll see. All right. And then finally, Elizabeth Warren, Democrat senator from Massachusetts. She said to big brains, look, look, big brains. I'm going to got some brains. Look, by July 28th, what did it say? <laughs> she demanded, she demands, wait, wait, wait. Yeah, she demands him to tell her, uh, you know, what he wants to do with the crypto. You know, what, what the hell, what the hell? Um, You know, what the regulations are and stuff. And so, um. This is perfect because this makes him uh, give us some regulatory clarity. You know what I mean? I mean, there's nothing wrong with Gensler. He's a, well, obviously he's a blockchain master. He taught blockchain at MIT. So, and like I said, he's not like the cock blocker guy, Jay Clayton, who was just some lawyer who doesn't know anything. Uh, Gary Gensler is a blockchain master, and he's also... Uh, a regulatory master. Remember, he used to run the CFTC here in America. 
That's the Commodities Futures Trading Commission here in America. So he's already been a big-time regulator, so he knows what's up. You know, he's played in the big leagues before. Uh, uh, he lives in the big leagues, you know what I mean? That's his turf. And so she says, look, look, I want some daggone regs, Miss Grant. <laughs> Calling you big brains and Miss Grant. You daggone Miss Grant. Look, big brains, we need some regs out of you. And like I said, that's great because it forces now. And it's not forcing. I mean, I shouldn't really say because I'm sure that he wants them too. Like I said, he used to teach blockchain and he knows uh, the significance of, uh, of of blockchain in general, like what it can do for your society, what can it, what it can do for your corporations, what it can do for your governments, what it can do for your organizations. He knows the benefit of blockchain. He taught it at MIT. MIT, that's the Michigan, wait, Massachusetts, is it? Massachusetts Institute of Technology, right? Yeah, that's where all the nerds come from in America. Yeah. Whoa. And he taught them. So uh, so he knows the, the power of the blockchain, if you kind of want to look at it that way, and its significance and what it could do for society. And so uh, unlike that last guy, Jay Clayton, this guy is not, um, how do you put this? Well, well, he's not cock blocking. He's just, all right, all right, I'll come out with it. I'll show you. I'll show you what I think, right? And personally, I think that, you know, <laughs> you know, they're asking him for his opinion, you know, because they respect the guy. You know what I mean? Like I said, he was the CFTC chair. Um, like I said, he taught blockchain. So I guess he could teach them a thing or two about it too. Um, the, the politicians here in the Congress in America. And uh, yeah, man, this is great news. Uh, you know, and she said by July 28th. So there's a deadline. You know what I mean? It's not just, okay, we're going to come out with something sometime when we fucking feel like it. You know, just la-di-da. No, July 28th. I want answers, motherfucker. And so that's great. Seeing as it's July 10th at 4.46 a.m. right now. Yeah, well, in 18 more days, we should hear. Uh, I don't know if it's going to be. Because I, I don't think it's going to be regulatory clarity. In other words, Gensler's not going to drop this as full regulations. He's just going to give her. Well, and Congress. It's not just her. I mean, all the senators a report about. his views about regulating crypto i mean maybe 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 he goes yeah these are my views and actually here bang, i'll just drop some chicken on you guys right now and give you the regs you need you know i who knows maybe it'll go like that um i don't want to get too excited like that <laughs> i think it'll probably just be a report of some kind uh because like we read about when he was at the last hearing he told them, yeah, I will regulate Bitcoin and crypto if it's within my purview. I, and he said, I will use all the powers of the SEC within my purview, you know, if it's within my jurisdiction to regulate. So it's not like, you know, the guy's not trying not to do his job. Like Clayton, you know, just, uh, you know, just being an idiot. This guy's doing it. Um, but he did say, he did say, <laughs> you know. Look, Congress, it's up to you fuck sticks, right? You guys get together and pass a law, right? Pass a law. Uh, let's get real. That's what it's about. You know, we need laws. Like we read about Germany last week, right? Yeah, Germany passed that law. Their legislators, their politicians passed the law. So that's it. That's the law of the land. So all those fun masters and everything in Germany, they're good to go now, right? And that's what Gary Gensler basically said, you know, like, yeah, 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 I see you fucking politicians looking at me. Look, dicks, you guys are right, write the laws. <laughs> I'm just the regulator. I, and that's what he said. I will regulate within my purview. But uh, we need thorough laws. OK, so anyway, I know I'm harping on it. and We've read about it here. Multiple times. And so. uh so I'll just say this again, finally, for the last point on this one, is that this is great because, like I said, Gensler's not trying to 
dodge dodge the question or you know anything like that so he's going to come up with regs and i'm sure well i guarantee you we will be reading about them when he comes out with them and that's going to be great stuff because that pushes everything along you know once that's another thing okay uh, one last thing then one i promise this will be the last thing is that when he comes out with his perspective on governing this space yeah well then it gives politicians something to fucking think about, right? Like, oh, okay, like this, like this. Oh, okay, like that, like that. Oh, I like this. I don't like that. You know, right now they're just duh in the dark, kind of stupid fucks, right? In a way. Um, <laughs> when it comes to crypto, right? And so uh, when you hear from the SEC chairman, respected SEC chairman, uh, everyone knows who he is. Everyone knows what he's about. Yeah, that gives them a framework to build around. You know what I mean? All right, all right. This gives us something to build around, you know? Let's get real. It makes it easier for them, right? <laughs> it makes it a lot easier for them to come out with the proper laws that are necessary to give us the regulatory clarity we need. Bang! To bring in the big money we need. Bang! To unleash the tsunami on us. Finally. So look, on that great note, bang! By the 28th, we're going to get regs. Whoa. Yes. Bang. So look, on that note, let's chill it and kill it. Bang. Let's get you back to your wives and live. Bang. Subscribe below. Press the bell. You get an automatic notification when I do the show. The greatest show on earth. The greatest show. <laughs> the bold. Look, my name is Shamar Clark. I love talking money. Bang. I love talking crypto. Bang. This is the favorite time of my day. So thank you for having me in your home. And I'll see you all tomorrow with another fun fact, fact filled day of crypto talk. Oh, yeah. Lots of crypto talk. <laughs> so until then, subscribe here. Boom. Watch that video there, Greatest of the Multiverse, and I'll see you all tomorrow. So look, my name is Shamar Clark. Always watching our money, and most importantly, always on duty. Bye. Till tomorrow. Yes. Over and out.